Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him mm. through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Okay, here we go. Hey. Born in the sin my mama was living in. Cursed from the very first women and men. As it dispersed, it got worse over the time. And because of it, many people were dying. I couldn't say myself, believe me, man, I was trying. I thought I could do it all on my own, but I was lying. I was lying. But the answer that I couldn't deny. He sent me your message and I responded with this reply. Okay, okay, I give myself away. I want to seek you. Teach me how to throw myself away and how to be you. People used to look, but I was transparent and see through. Now instead of me, when they look, I only want them to see you. He said, cool, I can work with that. But don't you quit and don't go back. And now your name is Deacon Holly. It's no longer Wainiac. You can now your name is Deacon Holly. Is that what your birth certificate is? My rebirth certificate. Amen. We are now live. Well, we actually been live. Amen. We got the camera, Doc. No, I'm just playing. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Uh, uh, praise God. Everybody to all who are listening, tuned in live. Y'all know what I'm about to ask y'all to do. Please share this video and invite at least five people, please, because we have some relevant information with, uh, what's that word we use? Revelatory knowledge. Right, 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 right. <laughs> For the people out there, man. So y'all know who it is. It's your boy, Minister Ali, and I'm here with my big brother, Dwayne Hyler. That's right, and you are now tuned in live to the Seed Talk. Hey, Amen. So today we want to talk about religion. All right, vain religion and um, pure religion. All right, you know we want to give some information on the two biblically. You know, we, 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 we hate our own opinions, so to say, when it comes to the Word of God and giving our information. So we want to talk about religion. What is religion? What, what is religion? Amen. Usually, you know, when we use the word religion or religious, um, we're basically talking about the general sense of, um, of faith that is grounded on tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Um partly biblical but manipulated you know we think about the pharisees right uh we think about right. catholicism mm -hmm. and, and and religions like this mm -hmm. where they took some part of god and then they added their own traditions and beliefs wow. and created a a <laughs> system uh, a religious system and that is what we often are discussing when we use the word or the term religion right uh the word religious itself simply just means something that you do uh the, uh the the word scrupulously is used in the actual definition but something that you do uh <laughs> continuously are, are a lot you know the example that it said was uh like if you eat pancakes every single day you eat pancakes religiously That's so right. the, the the general definition of the term is something that you do continuously and so there are good things to do continuously and also bad things to do continuously. Um, and we're going to get into those based on the scriptures that we have. That's right. And, and, and a lot of times we, you know, we get that word misconstrued because uh, we know that um, some people uh, or some of us have acted a part of a religion that had nothing to do with, you know, um, how could I say it, you know, trueness or spiritually. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Between us and God, 
And and that's what we want to talk about today. We really want to break down, you know, the essence of why, you know, we chose to talk about, you know, religion, uh, vain religion and pure religion and being religious. Right. You know. All right. So uh, we got some we have some scriptures. Um, Isaiah one. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to go to verse uh, first Isaiah one and um, James one. What a coincidence. Right. Um, um, where you want to start from? Um, Isaiah 1, that whole chapter. We won't read too much of it, but just start reading and we'll just go through it uh, as, as, as quickly right. as possible. Expeditiously. Yeah, that's so what I was looking for, but I couldn't find it, so I said quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Isaiah 1, it says, it says um, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah or Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Then he says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox owner knoweth his owner, and the donkey knows his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. All they right. have before we continue, he's just setting the foundation of who he's talking about. That's right. These are, are his people. These are God's people, right? These are people that are a part of the church, but, but they have forsaken God. Um, you know, they forgot in God and everything that they're doing, which we're going to get into, has nothing to do with God. They're just doing something mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with God because they forgot in him. And they're just entrenched in their own way of life. That's they're right. They're entrenched in their own sins and iniquities. Right. So, but these are not people who don't know who God is. These are his people, Israel. Right. So this can be representative of people who are in church. Amen. Right. And, and, and not only that, they thought what they're doing, what they were doing was pleasing to God. But it was their own way. We can't please God in our own way. Amen. God has a way set for us to please him. You know what I'm saying? And, and he took away he took away that, you know, finding our own ways uh, to please him. Uh, I think it's in Philippians or or is a Colossians which said, do all things as you're doing it unto the Lord. So there's a purpose in doing for God and to God. You right. know, so we can't just, you know, do things our way and think it'll please God. No, God has a way set to please him. Like in uh, Hebrews, he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. You know, so that's the way to please him. That's the way to please him. Outside of everything else he has set, it can't please God. Right. You see that with David, Psalms 51. You know, um, um, burnt, offer, burnt offering and sacrifice thou does not desire. And if you did, I would have gave it to you. Right. But right. a broken spirit and a contrite heart. You know, thou won't despise. Exactly. You know, so everything outside of that is, is you know, so that, empty. That would be like if you like um, over easy eggs, but you hate scrambled eggs. Right. You're like, I hate scrambled eggs. I love over easy eggs. Right. And then your wife made you scrambled eggs knowing this. And she like, but I did it for you. No, you didn't do it for me because <laughs> you know I hate that. I like <laughs> over easy eggs. Oh, my goodness. All right, so verse 5 said, why should ye be stricken? Anymore. This is what we, I was just talking about uh, when I was referenced. Uh, why should we be stricken anymore? Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So this, this is the level of rebellion that wow. they were in. Mm -hmm. God is saying, it's no point in me even chastising you anymore. It's no point in me sending you a word of warning anymore <laughs> because the more I do it, the worse you get. The worse you get. So these people are entrenched in rebellion. They're entrenched in their iniquity. They're entrenched in doing things their own way, totally separate from any acknowledgement of God. Wow. And it says, and the daughter, no, your country, verse 7, Isaiah 1, uh, Verse 7, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been in Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. 
Verse 10 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Amen. So here, remember, he's talking about the children of Israel, his people, but he calls them sons of Gomorrah and rulers of Sodom. He's, he's equating them with that evil, wicked city right. that he destroyed and saying he's, they're part of that. Even though they're a part of the church, even though they're a part of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. He's equating them to that because of the, their deeds. And right. as we're about to now get into, they're doing all of the external stuff, which right. we're about to do. Right. Empty religion. They're it's doing vain, all man. of the wow. external stuff, but it is separate from God and mm -hmm. his way. And so we're going to see how God feels about that. And he was calling them back after time after time after time after time, time after time, yeah. time after time. And, and just Israel went, did I, evil in yeah, the sight of the Lord again. again. <laughs> All right. But well, we, uh, we have a, um, a question from Kevin Fred Barnes. He said, God bless you, brother. Would this, would this be, he must try to say, would this be similar to the open discussion about God's word? Um, uh, I, it's definitely an open discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm thinking there's a typo in there somewhere, right. so it's kind of hard for us to grasp what you're saying. Feel free to chime in, but please. Yeah, please feel free. Questions, um, if you have anything to add, please do. All right, so once again, we, we are talking about uh, vain religion, and then we're going to dive in, uh, Lord willing, into pure religion. Uh, and that uh, is referenced in James chapter 1, verse 26. All right. So I'm going to keep reading uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, uh, verse 11. This is where, you know, we are uh, going to dive in uh, deeper to our discussion. It says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices? I'm going to stop right there. Their right. sacrifices. Wow. They're making sacrifices to God. Right. Now, he, he just explained he, how he views them. He views them as rulers of Sodom and children of Gomorrah as sinners who have forgotten about him, but yet they're still going to the temple and making sacrifices. And God's response is, what is the purpose of it? What's wow. the point? So we see that today. There are so many people who go to church Sunday every, after every Sunday, Sunday, but off they of live praise, a life. Off of prayer. Exactly. They live a life that is in complete rejection to God. They have forgotten God. I never knew him in the first place, but yet they still go Sunday in, after Sunday to church. And like you said, offer praise, offer prayer, offer uh, uh, worship you know, or whatever you want to call it. They're doing the external parts. That's right. But there's no internal connection to God. That's why in Matthew, well, in, in Isaiah, it's, it's here also, uh, Jesus referenced it. Um, he said, they honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Exactly. And it's like, how can you compare the two? Because what what's in your heart must be the you know must must you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Manifest through uh, communication or right. you know through speech or through through uh, worship you know. And he said that they honor me with their lips, which is okay, but it wasn't accepted because there was no true reality to it. Exactly. Because he he, he wants our heart. Exactly. The heart has to be involved with God, not only your mouth, not only your dance, not only your praise. Your heart has to be wow. involved with God, not just, you know, the outward expression because you, you can't see the heart. Wow. So you it's know? basically a lie. Yeah. So if, I, Deceiving go, if ourselves. I go to church on Sunday and I sing and I dance, but I have no true connection to God nope. in my heart. Nope. And I just reject him all week long, every day, until nope. that point. It's false and he doesn't accept it. Yep. Uh, for another example, in John, he said, How dull it the love of God in you? If you see your sister, brother in need, and shut up your bowels of confession, you have just become religious. Right. And your religion is in vain now. To that point, if you go uh, behind the text or further down the text, um, he calls them... Murderers, I believe. Mm -hmm. If you and hate if you your look, own brother, you're a murderer. If you look behind the text, the problem with them is that they were treating each other poorly. That's right. They hated each other. Mm -hmm. So there was no love between them. Wow. And there was always issue. And that was their main problem that wow. caused them to be looked at uh, the way they're being looked at. Wow. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, verse 11, it says, then he says, I, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of, the, or of he goats. So you see what's going on here? God, he, he utterly despises that of the physical realm. Right. We see he don't, he don't, he don't, this stuff don't please or move God. Nope. You know, this stuff don't, you know, woo God or, you know, cause God to say, whoa, you know, gave me, you nope. know. And verse 12 says, when you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Look what he called it. You tread my court. Yeah. You, that's like I come and I step all on your flowers, basically, on, and just I, ruin you, your garden. You going? We, we, we can, we can go beyond what God want us to do, or we can, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it omit, or you know, we know we're supposed to do something, but yet we don't do it. Right. You know, but when we do do it, we do it. You know, that's a way that's inadequate right. to God. Right. And, and I see uh, religion. Um, and like Christian religion being uh, a bit culprit in this because I've seen, I've been in churches where, you know, wow. the the preacher or whatever, he is like telling everybody to, you know, praise and dance and whatever. Right. And like, if you're not doing that at a certain level, <laughs> they condemn you. Like, oh, get away from that person because their praise ain't like your praise. You like, watch out, they man. must not love God. Right. So then what that does is it creates an environment to where no matter what my relationship with God is, right. I have to get up and do the external thing mm -hmm. or else I'm going to be shamed in front wow. of the people. And I don't want to be shamed in front of the people. So I'm going to just get up and trample his courts and tread on his courts. <laughs> right. And offer him sacrifices that he don't want because wow. it's fake. Instead of just, you know, preaching the word and letting the word move people. That's right. I see, I see you, Sister Ty. She said, that's why Satan attacks the mind, heart, and the tongue. That's right. Satan will cause somebody to be religious. Yep. Yes, he he will cause somebody to be religious. He wants that because it blocks that connection with God. To take on the form of God, but yet deny his power. Yep, the word. Yep. S and and that's where that comes from. That to me, that's where that comes from. Yeah, Satan's influence. Yeah, that's because that's only what he can have on people. He can't control people. He can't do nothing. I mean, in a sense, he can. But if you are solely given over to his influence, then that's who you're being controlled by. Exactly. You're being controlled to you know come to church, you know, uh, and and act like you love people, you know, based off a hug or but you really don't. That's that's vain. God God sees everything. Right. And your relationship with God is not predicated off somebody else. It's predicated off you being obedient to his word and his word alone. Amen. Yeah. And if he can do anything to keep you separate from the word of God. That's right. Even if that's allowing you to get sucked into the religious aspect of uh, w whatever the belief system or tradition wow. is. He's fine with that because you're still disconnected from the word of God and all of that other stuff don't matter. You know, mm. and that day, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, right? Mm. They did all of the external religious stuff. That's right. But they had no connection to God, so they were rejected. Wow. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I know wow. you're not. Yet they did everything. Um, Kevin Barnes says, I'm thinking these behaviors of the church mm. were of the many... I behaviors see. that caused God to send Christ, who was offered up uh, by for us all to go to it. the cross as our sacrifice to redeem us the penalty for sin. Amen. We needed that. We needed Christ because we were broken. We were we were scattered. We were destroyed. We were you know in bondage. Right. And He needed to come to break the yoke of bondage. To give wow. us access to freedom. So, yes, sir, I do agree. That's right. Freedom of, and also freedom of vain religion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Just doing stuff just to do it, but there's no meaning behind it. There's no love. There's no, you know, just nothing. Just doing it to doing it, you know, and, 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 and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's man. liberty. You know, there's yeah. liberty, man. We, we can really 
have a drive through the unction of God's spirit, not just doing stuff just to do stuff. You know, I understand, you know, there's an usher board and, you know, there's a, you know, all this other stuff, you know, that's, that's okay. But what about when it comes to God? Right. You know, and to see that they like, like, like we just read, they had everything, you know, to do, you know, it was just in vain. Right. Why? Because God was calling them to repent. Right. So unless they were not in a state of repentance, right. every nothing else matters. Yep. It didn't matter. You doing this for what? That don't matter. I want you saved. Yep. And we're almost to that point, which is then going to transition into James. Uh, verse 13 says, bring no more. We're, we're still in Isaiah 1. All right. Chapter 1, verse 13. He says, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblings, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. Look what he's talking about. All of your assemblies, wow. all of your gatherings, all of your, uh, what do we call them? All your convocations, all your conclaves, <laughs> all your, um, wh whatever we call them, all your picnics, right? All of that is meaningless to me if you are living a life that rejects me. Mm -hmm. It's meaningless. But we put so much effort mm -hmm. and focus into that, and we reject the important thing, which is being and connected to God through love, through his Holy Spirit, wow. being connected to the word of God. We reject the word, and we take on all of these things, mm -hmm. all the meetings, all of the festivals, all of the Sabbaths, right? Incense, which uh, most, most of the time represents prayer, right? It's an abomination. Wow. It's an abomination. And, and, and it's crazy because when we are in a state of, state of um, how can I say it, you know, sin or condemnation or just in our flesh, we try to do things according to our flesh to get back to God, but it won't work. Nope. Repentance just means a change of, a change of mind. Yeah. A change of course, change of action, change right. of heart. Right. You know, repent. Just go the opposite direction of where you were, where you were going. Right. You know, yeah. and 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 if we're if that is not the course of our life, then we will keep doing things that we yeah. think could please God. I always tell people, you know, um, 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 you know, we like I said earlier, we our ways our ways can't please God. You know, man's ways seeming right. Right. You know, but in the end, they lead it unto destruction. Man's ways seeming right in his own eyes. Right. You know, yep. but God ways, God's ways are right. It, it Yahweh, goes, God's way. It go back to, you know? uh, <laughs> it go back to Martha and Mary. Right? Yeah. Mary wasn't doing nothing. She was just sitting there. Right. Connected to the word of God because right. Jesus was the physical representation of the word of God. Right. That's all she was doing was connected to the word. And he said that she chose the one mm -hmm. good thing. Mary was trying to do everything mm -hmm. outwardly to please him. But the one good thing was to just sit and be connected to the word of God. Right. Kevin, Kevin Barnes said recently, because of the chronic condition of the flesh to war against my willpower, to yield to the leading of his presence by the third part of the Godhead. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And you know that the, 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 the flesh is, is a cold piece of work. Yeah, right? man. Because it's active continuously. That's why the Bible says we have to die right daily. It's a continual fight. It's a continual war based on Genesis 3.15, and it don't go nowhere. Mm -mm. You, can't escape, you can't escape it. Mm -mm. That's why in Revelation, when we receive the new body, mm -hmm. we're in the new Jerusalem, it says what? There will be no more curse. Nope. No, no more. more curse. Our flesh... Wicked, cursed with sin, and it's constantly trying to bring you into bondage. Amen. But through the word of God, we can find peace and relief and comfort. That's our wow. that's our safe space. That's our strong tower. Amen. Wow. And, and this, is, this is what he, he tell them. He says, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. This is how bad it's got now. Yep. And I want to, I, and I want to. Explain what that means. That's how they used to pray. Yeah. Spread forth their hands. So he's saying, when you pray, I'm hiding <laughs> my eyes. I know so many people, and I don't blame them because this is how we were just brought up. I don't know if all, you know, I just can only speak as a black man. We were brought up, you know, you pray. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you do. You just pray. But he's saying, because they're living in sin, mm -hmm. he hides his eyes from their prayer. Wow. He doesn't want to hear that. 
you know, we, the people always talking about praying. God is not hearing the prayers of everybody. Mm -mm. He's not hearing the prayers of those who are living in sin. Mm -mm. He said, I hide my eyes so that I don't see you when you wow. spread forth your hands. Wow. That's heavy. And then he says, yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. You just said that your hands are full of blood. And, and it's crazy because how were their hands full of blood? What they were doing were killing people. Right. Because of their lifestyles. Yep. How they were treating each other. Right. Come if on I now. Treat, if I treat you with hatred, that's considered murder to God. That's considered murder. Wow. Then it says, verse 16, wash you, make you clean, and put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. And he says, cease to do evil. All right. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Wow. And that's why I say it's transitioning wow. into that. And that right there is repentance. Come on now. He said, cease to do evil. And then look what he said. He said, learn to do good. Learn. You have to learn to do good. When well, you've been living a life of evil and that has what has become mm -hmm. uh, second nature or normal to you or first nature, you have That's to right. learn to do good. Mm -hmm. You have to learn. That part is a process. The Bible says we're being made perfect. That's why we need the word because wow. that is how we learn to be good. That is what we learn uh, righteousness from, you know, through the example of Christ and through the teaching of the apostles and the spirit of God as it gives revelation throughout the entire Bible. Right? That's right. That's how we learn to do good. Wow. But if we reject the word of God, and we just try to stop doing evil. There's, we're not replacing it with anything, so we can only Whoa. go back to continuously doing evil. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did, because at the beginning, at the beginning of the chapter, it said they rejected God. Mm. Their hearts were removed from Him, so now there's nothing for them to do but go back to doing evil, which is what they did. And now they find themselves. Yeah, in that's this what state. it says. It says, but if ye refuse, no. How how is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now it's just full of murderers. And we see things can it's like, man, we being religious will cause you to be in a state that's that's like ugly, so to say. Right. You know. I, I mean that in the in the in the in a in a way saying that, you know, we can we can cause other people around us to fall away from us. Right. And and that's our fault. Right. Especially if we know God, know the way of God. Right. And you ugly know? is a good term. You don't even got to justify it because God used the term abomination. <coughs> right. That means he finds it disgusting. Just. So if it's disgusting to him. Nothing to do with it. It's ugly. But as we get to the part, uh, what do they say? Plead for the widow. Mm -hmm. uh, defend the fatherless mm -hmm. right this is what he's telling them they should be doing mm -hmm. instead of all of these festivals that you caught up in That's all right. of these uh sabbats and all of these dinners and all of these convocations and convictions or whatever they <laughs> are um and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way right i'm just saying if it's void of the right. truth of god's right. word then it's empty right instead of that he then tells them what they should be doing after mm -hmm. they repent because the first thing he said to do was stop doing evil and learn to do good that's wow. the change of mind after you repent and become connected to god again now this is what you do and that same thought continues in james which is where exactly. we're going to go now that's right and and it's crazy because james is really setting the standard on you know what what shall we look like as a believer if you really read the context of James one two three and four he's setting standards on what we should look like especially when he talked about you know the rich man with the, all the apparel you know the poor man mm -hmm. you know and and ver in chapter one and verse twenty six he's 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 talking about you know what what just went on in Isaiah right if you're doing if you are doing this and it's empty then it, it means nothing right. You know, he said, if any man among you seem to be religious, right? We use that word a lot, sometimes in a negative sense. Now we using it in the sense of, you know, um, in the right way, so to say. He said, if any man among you seem to be religious, which means he's, he does the things uh, that a Christian should. But then he says, and he bridled not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man religion is in vain. It's in vain. Simple. 
And then verse 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, that's the part we have to deal with. Because remember the commission, right? Mm -hmm. Go out and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Now, spiritually, who's fatherless? Wow. That's right. Who 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 is he really talking about when he says visit the fatherless? Mm. Right? If God is the father, if the word is the father, then those who are without the word, that's the commission. To visit the fatherless and then bring them what? Right. The word of God. Glad tidings, that's right. In hopes that God might grant them repentance and they can be received as a child of God and they're no longer fatherless. Right? Wow. What is a widow? Right? Someone whose husband is dead. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, what is that? Someone who was married to God, but has lost their way. They are now in a state of apostasy, as uh, Paul wrote. Right? They're no longer connected to God. Mm. Blessed are the peacemakers. Wow. The ministry of reconciliation. So it all has to do with reconciling people back to the word. Wow. That is what he's telling us to do right here. That is what he's defining as pure religion. and undefiled religion. Wow. Meaning this Before is what, God. This is what you should wow. be doing religiously. This is what you should be focused on. Mm -hmm. It's bringing the word of God to the people who need it. Not all of the other external stuff mm -hmm. when you can't even broadle your tongue, right? You're speaking to people in anger, anger and hatred. But you know you're you just at, can't control you your go tongue. to church and you that praise don't. God and then you get out and you cussing everybody out from <laughs> from Monday to Saturday, wow. right? But then you go back to church on Sunday and you are dancing and you are praising God and then you are cursing everybody out from Again, Monday to Sunday. You can't control your tongue. You're treating people bad. You're being mean to people. You have no love within your heart, right, towards mm -hmm. man or God, which are the two great commandments: is to love God and to love your neighbor, right? But wow. yet, there you are doing all the religious aspects. That's right. right. That, that's not what's going to get us good with God. Nope. Doing all that stuff. We do that stuff because it has a purpose, if it has a purpose. Amen. And we do that stuff for that purpose. But that is not what gets us right with God. Right? Getting us right with God is repentance, mm -hmm. belief in his word, and continuing in that connection with his word. And then taking that word to the people that are without it, That's right. to your brothers who are in a state of apostasy and maybe God might grant them repentance, right? And to keep in himself. Their and to that's keep right. himself, right, amen. Unspotted from the world. Right, and that's just daily repentance, daily uh, dying from your flesh, dying to your flesh. Cleansing that's how yourself. you stay unspotted. You stay in the word. Wash yourself with that water. Reject your flesh. <laughs> reject sin. Amen. And that should be our focus, not all of the other stuff we get so caught up in. You know, we want to be so grandioso and we want to be so stuck on looking the part, right? And uh, keeping the status quo with what other preachers and pastors look like. That's not what.